My name's Obed Briefo from London, England, um, for all those who don't know. My journey to seminary started um, four years ago when my wife and I um, saw that I had a gifting and I'd been called to ministry. We pursued seminary. We looked in the UK. There was nothing there. We looked in America and there was too many here. So through men that I loved and respected, we found the master's seminary. We applied. We got accepted. We got excited, started to make plans to come. And we found out some really bad news. And the bad news was that I needed a huge amount of money to be here. I always thought Britain and America, we love each other. Um, <laughs> you know, the Brits can come here and work, but I found out that I couldn't work here. My wife couldn't work here. And because of that, we needed to show the American embassy in London that we had a huge sum of money. We came, spoke to Ray, and Ray kept telling us, if God wants you here, he will provide. If God wants you here, he will provide. And everyone afterwards just kept telling us that. We trusted God. We pursued ways in which we can raise money. We had a church of 20 people, so that was impossible. And we just had to trust God. So we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and God miraculously provided all the money for us in a few months. And here I am studied at this seminary. My journey through seminary has been amazing. God has provided for us in an incredible way. One interesting story is when we got here, people kept advising us not to get an American car. No offense to you guys, but they were like, do not get an American car. It just does not work. Rather get a Japanese car. So we didn't listen to people's advice. We wanted a full American experience. <laughs> so we went, got an American car not long after on our way back from church. It brought broke down on the freeway. And I was like, I should have listened to the Americans. And so it broke down, but not long after the church, we were part of Grace Community Church, a man heard, and he absolutely just blessed us with a brand new car not long after. God has been incredibly faithful, and my wife and I are continually blown away by God's provision for us. Senior testimony. I'd always looked forward to sharing my senior testimony when I got here. So last Tuesday was my turn. I was excited. I've had tons of experience. Public speaking comes easy to me. I've done TV. I've done stage at my church. I've had opportunities to preach and teach in front of thousands of people. It's public speaking, nothing to me. So last Tuesday, I'm sitting here. I'm excited. I can't wait to go on and share my testimony with you guys. And I stand here, I begin to speak, I make you guys laugh. I'm like, yes, I've got them. Here I go. And I'm sharing and I just start to feel weird. And I'm like, what is this feeling? I, I don't really cry a lot. I'm like, okay, I'm getting emotional. I'm about to cry. What do I do? But there was just this overwhelming thing that came upon me. And you guys remember, <laughs> I, I passed out. I woke up. All I saw was my wife crying. I had several students looking down at me. They ripped my tie off. They were like, get some air in. <laughs> It's crazy. I couldn't believe what had happened. It felt like a dream, literally felt like a dream. And um, I had passed out. Paramedics came. They said you had low blood sugar. Um, I should have eaten breakfast, which I'm trying to work on eating more now. Um, and it was just one of those crazy experiences I thought I would never experience. I'm a healthy guy. I play soccer all my life. I'm fit as a fiddle, as they say. And I never thought I would experience anything like this. And I got home. And to be honest with you guys, I was so low that day. I was saying to God, why me? Why do I have to be the student? that passes out <laughs> while sharing his senior testimony. Why me? I'm going to be remembered for this. <laughs> Absolutely. So I was so low. I was questioning my calling. I was like, God, who, who wants to employ a pastor that faints? <laughs> so low. And just questioning my calling. I'm just over dramatic. And I spoke, I managed to speak to my wife and she encouraged me. But as I was questioning God, God reminded me that there is nothing you can do without me, basically. And what he said was, 
Even if you're sharing a five minute testimony, it is because of my grace and my strength that I allow you to do whatever you do. You cannot breathe without me. Every breath is from me, God reminded me of. And that was so, I needed that so much. And I'm sure you students need it. We've been through seminary. We've um, got trained and we're equipped and we're ready to go. And most of us are incredibly gifted. But my encouragement to you as I conclude is that we need God incredibly do not be prayerless. Pray at all times. Whatever you, you, you are asked to do, be praying because it is God who gives you strength to do it. It is God that has allowed me to get through these five minutes without passing out again. And it's just incredible. What a lesson for me. And I pray that I am prayerful always. And I recognize my need and reliance on God, not just for my physical being, but spiritually as well, because it is God that takes everything you say and makes it work. And to finish, Spurgeon, my one of my um, favorite historians said, um, it said of him that every time he went to preach, every step he took towards his pulpit, he would say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And that was not because Spurgeon wasn't gifted and talented and confident and ex you know had lots of experience. It's because he recognized that he can do nothing. Nothing can genuinely happen in his ministry without God. Thank you.